ہم شانتی ٹوینٹی سیکنڈ مئی ٹو تھاؤزینڈ نائنٹین وینسڈے ٹوڈے سلوگن ان آرڈر ٹو فلفل دا ڈیزائرس آف دی وانڈرنگ سولس انکریز یور پاور آف ڈسرنمنٹ ان آرڈر ٹو فلفل دا ڈیزائرس آف وانڈرنگ سولس انکریز یور پاور آف ڈسرنمنٹ to discern means to discern means to discriminate hmm? out of the eight powers one of the important powers is power to discern is always associated with power to judge so before you judge you have to discern So by saying, increase this power of discernment to discern what? Parakhna. To discern, to discriminate, to distinguish what? Hmm? No. You have to, if you have to fulfill their desire, then you have to increase this power. You should have very sharp power of discernment. Because after discernment only then you can judge. So what is discerning? To discern what is truth and what is untruth. What is satya and what is asatya. One should be able to discern. whether this is truth or untruth. One should be able to discern whether this is essenceful or essenceless. One should be able to discern if this is pap or punya, whether this is sin or it's a charitable act. So this power of discernment should be here. One should be able to discern is it Srimat or is it Manmat or Parmat or Janmat? What is it? It's the dictates of my own mind. This is the dictates from others or is it the public opinion? And what does Srimat say? So one should be able to discern the Srimat. So what is Srimad and what is anti-Srimad? What else? One should be able to discern what is Shubhabhavana and Kubhavana means what is good wishes and what are vicious wishes. So this power of discernment is needed everywhere in life. Throughout the day, we have to keep on discerning things. One should be able to discern what is lust and what is love. One should be able to discern what is greed and what is need. This is spiritual grammar. One cannot make mistake in such grammar and if one does, he will have to suffer. So one should be able to discern what is attachment and what is love. More often than not, we call our attachment as love or our attachment as service. One should be able to discern what is service and what is disservice. Probably many times it is disservice and we call it service. We should be able to discern so many things in life. What is truth and what is untruth. 
the things which are happening with us or things which we are doing are they truth or untruth are we sailing in the boat of truth or are we are sailing in the boat of untruth and baba has said those who sail in the boat of truth or untruth the boat will one day sink without leaving a mark while those who sink in the boat of who sail in the boat of truth they will have to face lot of challenges there will be lot of upheaval in the boat of truth but then truth often ultimately it is the truth that wins so that faith in the truth so one should be able to discern first of all what is truth and what is untruth just as any organ of the body is uh infected and has got gangrenous so before the infection spreads to other part of the body one needs to amputate that part of the body one has to throw it off cut it off in a similar manner if you see a particular area of life has got poisonous one should throw it off if one particular attachment has become the reason for our suffering so consider that attachment as the gangrenous part of the body and cut it and throw it off before it spreads its poison everywhere so one should be very much careful regarding the canker of untruth canker means the disease of plant in mahatma gandhi's autobiography there is one chapter where he said the title of the chapter is canker of untruth canker is a disease of plant so some plants get one disease that is known as canker so he has written uh, mahatma gandhi has written that he had fallen in bad company and he resorted to non vegetarian food and he started smoking and uh, he started eating non veg he also one or two times stole some money from his home and then when asked he even spoke untruth so ultimately he confessed everything in front of his father and that's another thing so whether whatever we are doing is it truth or untruth that's very important <coughs> second is whether it is essential or essentialess sar asar what is it can i call it essential or it is all waste whatever we do that should be full of essence third whether it is pap or punya whether it is sin or it is charitable act we often try to hide the sins which we commit and hiding sin further increases the burden of sin that's why the best thing about sin if one commits it one must confess in front of the father confession is mahatma gandhi also writes when he went to his father and he told he wrote everything on a piece of paper and handed over to his father and he waited what was the reply and the father didn't say anything but father was in tears and they said and he said that i was also tearful so but those tears washed away all that untruth all the sins that were committed wittingly and unwittingly willingly and unwillingly and he also mentions why he resorted to non vegetarian food he said that he got in friendship with one of his uh, very hefty person who said that the british are ruling us because we don't eat non veg if you start eating non vegetarian food we will overthrow the british power and this is why he resorted to eating non veg but then he was born in a vaishnava family and he broke the principle of his family and for which he was very much repentant 
then later on he confessed so one should be able to discern punya and pap what is sin what is charitable deed what is charitable act then one should be able to discern what is shrimat and what is manmat parmat chanmat one should be able to segregate this is shrimat this is manmat this is parmat this is chanmat entire brahmin families brahmin life is all about this segregation dividing this is shrimat i have to follow this this is manmat this is dictates of others so there can be many times confusion because they all mimic shrimat all three are very much like shrimat but shrimat is the shrimat this is my way your way his way her way this is the way jesus christ says in bible i am the way the truth and the life it's not about your way my way i am not telling you what i think i am not telling you what he thinks i am telling you the way the way means the ultimate everybody has to follow the same i am the truth i am the way the truth and the life so there is authority in the statement so here also baba says what i am telling you is the way it's not your way his way or what they think what scriptures think i am not telling you about scriptures no one can ever come to me with scriptures so it is the way scriptures means the divine commandments the shrimat means the divine commandments the old testament talks about 10 commandments of moses and on which the jewish jewish religion is based upon so these are the divine commandments these are the divine ordinance these are the ultimate orders these are the laws these are the orders these are the highest constitution these are the highest principles these are the highest tenets dogmas the highest rules and regulations of brahmin life and we call it shrimat baba has often said this shrimat shri word this should be used only for god alone no one else should use this word only shri baba alone deserves this is his title shri shri he doesn't like this title to be usurped taken away or snatched by anyone so this is his exclusive monopoly his title shri so it is shri mat shri means the highest the loftiest the greatest the most holy the sublimest so that is shrimat so one should be able to discern what is shrimat and what is parmat manmat and janmat and for that what is the way to understand shrimat deep study of murlis without that you cannot understand shrimat shrimat is not something that you get a list of shrimat these are 108 shrimat take and follow it's not like that shrimat has to be understood on daily basis because every day shrimat deepens for every day shrimat is different though the underlying current is same but still it is very vast yesterday also yesterday or day before yesterday baba said even if you take the ocean as ink 
the tree is as your pen and what and this earth as the paper you cannot write gyan the glory of god is very vast so this gyan is this is known as shrimat shrimat is condensed gyan shrimat is concentrated gyan so discerning shrimat and manmat parmat and then discerning what is this hmm yes sir listening okay leave this lust and love one should be able to know that this is not love this is pure lust lust is the greatest enemy this is not ah uh, yeah come it come to so this is not spiritual friendship but this is something else and one should be able to dis- uh, discern this is spiritual friendship and this is love and this is service and this is lust if it is lust but one tries to cover it and calls it service or calls it spiritual friendships or calls it uh love spiritual love probably one is practicing self deception love is a divine virtue lust is the is comes in the category of vice or the greatest vice and often in today's world everyone calls lust as love they have no idea about what is love love means it is always the divine love love means it is always the bodylessness love has nothing to do with body while the worldly love centers around body love means body that is what is the definition of the world they feel love means body consciousness doing everything with body is love but that is incomplete or rather the dangerous definition of love and that's why the world has deteriorated because of this one reason don't call you one must be able to discern dissociate or discriminate power of discernment greed and need this is that we are doing it for baba's service people work for 10 hours 12 hours 18 hours they are working all the time and they say that this is very much needed for baba's service and for the sake of that service they have sacrificed their gyan and yoga in fact it is their greed for money it's not the need mm-hmm. our needs are very less but greed has no limit you get the whole world and yet you remain dissatisfied when alexander came in india and then when he was departing he could not enter india fully he had to go back and when he was about to die he said he put he said about three things he said that when i die i want these three things to be done first hmm what are the three things three conditions he said when you die he said when i die and when you will put me on that buyer 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 you know, arthi yeah. so it's the doctors who will carry it physicians to show to the world that these doctors could not save me first so when alexander died about to die he said doctors will carry second whatever wealth i have that should be spread everywhere on the way 
to show to the world that I am going empty handed. I don't have anything. And third condition, when I will die, my hand should be like this. If this is that wire, earthy, my hands should be outside to show to the world that there is nothing in my hand. So when Alexander died, he talked about these three things. So, greed and need. It's actually our needs are very less. We need, we need very less for survival. But whatever is the expansion, and even in the name of service, in fact that is somewhere element of greed there. And then, attachment and love, again the same. One is attached to, A is attached to B. And when one is asked, you are so much attached, he says, no, no, it's our spiritual love. We are not attached, we are brothers and sisters. We are not attached, it's a relation of service. One likes to work with B. When B is around, the speed of service increases. The quality of service increases. Hmm. <laughs> Spiritual friendships. But then there is a deep attachment. Let B go somewhere. And then C. A becomes restless. Or in place of B, let C come. And then there is a fight. So that means there was a deep attachment. So don't call. One has to attack very strongly on attachment. And then, hmm, Shubhavna and Kubhavna. What is good wishes and what are bad wishes? Many times, if somebody insults us, somebody speaks very badly with us, we are not filled with good wishes for that person. For some time, mind changes. To have good wishes for everyone is not going to one's aunt's house. It's difficult to have good wishes for everyone. In the Ramayana, they show uh, after doing everything, the army of Rama, along with bear and along with monkeys, they have reached Lanka and they are about to wage a war. The next day, there is a war. But at night, Sri Ram thinks, Ki before I start this war tomorrow morning, let me once more again give him an opportunity, a last chance. Let me see what happens. And that's why he sent peace messenger. Whom? Angat. Angat is the last effort made by Sri Ram. He sends Angat go as a peace messenger. But then, Ravana is beyond listening to anyone. He thinks this is an act of cowardice. He thinks Ram is coward. And he got afraid. That's why he is trying to make peace with me. So he cannot understand. So, till the last, Sri Ram and have that good wishes for him, at least now let him ask for forgiveness. If that Sita is back, I will not wage the war. But then, he never listens. So good wishes, the stock of good wishes should never go down. No matter what somebody has done with us. And that's why there is one statement in Ramayana. Sri Ram says, I don't know why I feel like to forgive this Ravan again and again. Probably he might have been my devotee in some other birth. That's why I feel as if I should forgive him. No, he, he had done all the wrong things. But still I feel that I should forgive him. <laughs> so, a very generous heart is needed. So, one must be able to discern Parakhana. What is Shubhavna and what is Kubhavna. If this bad, evil Kubhavna is entering one must throw it off. It's a good diagram.
So Baba is saying, in order to fulfill the desire of wandering souls, now there are souls who are weak, they are wandering. If you want to fulfill their souls, you must be able to discern what they need, what they want, what is their desire. What they desire, give them that. If one wants water, give him water. If one wants food, give him food. If one wants juice, give him juice. <laughs> Whatever one desires, give him that. So in order to fulfill the desires of wandering soul, increase your power of discernment. So increase, sharpen the power of discernment. Om Shanti.